Number three, the third foundation is that men and women have been given distinct roles and responsibilities right. in the Word of God. Okay, right. so before you mistakenly assume that I think that all women should be barefoot, pregnant, and chained to the kitchen sink, I don't think that at all, okay? That was humor. That wasn't serious. Actually, God is tougher on men than he is on women. How many of you know that? That's harder on men than he is on women. Why? Because God gave Adam the spiritual responsibility for his wife and those within his family. Let's look at the man's role first, all right? First of all, men are to be the spiritual leaders of the house. I'm preaching good. As the man of God in my family, I have, I'm the one responsible before the Lord. I have a moral obligation before God to lead my family in spiritual matters. Uh -huh. Now, in Genesis chapter 2, this is found in Genesis chapter 2, and what happens in Genesis chapter 1, and kind of get the big picture that God created the heaven and the earth, and, and Adam and Eve, and all of that, and kind of the big picture. But in Genesis chapter 2, what happens is the Lord begins giving the sequence of who came first and what happened. Right. Right. And uh, I want you to notice that it's very clear in the text that Adam is created first. How many of you know none of this is by accident? God does everything with a purpose and with a reason. God did this with intentionality. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7 says this, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Now it has been humorously said, that women sometimes expect too much of men, considering their origin. <laughs> Let me put it the way you'll understand it. Considering that the first man was created out of dirt, don't expect a lot out of your man. Right. <laughs> okay. That is not Bible truth. That's called Bible humor. Amen. It does say that the Lord God formed the man. He created the man. He breathed into him the breath of life. And I want you to note that it wasn't Eve that was created that way. It was Adam. Adam was created first. And let me tell you something. Even though Adam came from dirt, God expected a lot from Adam. That's he right. absolutely did. And he expects a lot from men today in the 21st century. Amen. Amen. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 15 says this. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. In other words, he gave him a job. Am I right? That's right. And the Lord God commanded the man. I want you to know, he didn't suggest to the man. He didn't kind of, you know, hint at this to the man. What did he, he commanded the man That's right. of every saying, of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. Now, there's two things that jump out of that verse almost immediately at me. And the first thing is that God gave Adam a job before he gave him a wife. That's right. The job That's came right. first, and after the job came a wife. That's right. So, single gals, single ladies, it doesn't matter how handsome he is. Come on. It doesn't matter how uh, wonderful he can talk. It doesn't Come matter on. how much time he spends at the gym. What a great athlete he used to be back when Come he was in high school. All of those things matter. If he doesn't have a job, he doesn't need a wife. Do I got any daddies or grandpas that can say amen? Do I got any mamas that are concerned that can say amen? Come on. They've got to have a job. Hello. It's interesting that the stuff you find in the Bible when you read it, it's amazing. You say, well, Pastor, you don't get it. He, he understands me. He listens to me so well. Of course he does. That's all he's got to do all day is listen to me. That was called sarcasm. All right, anyway. And then you'll notice that God did not tell Eve the stuff come on, come on. about don't eat of this tree and eat of the rest of the trees. Some people say, well, he probably did later. We don't really know that. If the Bible doesn't say it, how can we put that in there and assume that he did? Now, I'm not saying that Eve didn't have any responsibility. How many you know Eve had some responsibility? Obviously, Adam told Eve, and, and, but, but I, 
I just want you to know that men have been given a spiritual responsibility. That's and right. it started with Adam and it goes all the way till today. And I want you to remember that after the fall, after Eve said, you know, was deceived by the serpent, ate of the fruit, gave to Adam, he ate of the fruit. And they were hiding in the bushes, wondering about God. And, and when, when, when the Lord came, what did he say? He did not call for Eve. No, he did not. Am I right? Genesis 3.19 says, Then the Lord God called to Adam. Adam and said to him, Where are you? He did not call for you. Why? Because God had given the spiritual responsibility to Adam. And so what I'm saying to every man in the house today is that you have been given a spiritual responsibility by God Almighty to lead your family. It's the man's responsibility to get up in the morning on Sunday and say, hey, as for me and my house, we're going to go and we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to church today. It's the man's responsibility to sit down with the finances and say, hey, we're putting God first in our finances. Y'all can say amen right there. And it's the man's responsibility that if something is inappropriate on the movie, on the television channel, that he needs to use the clicker. Amen. amen. That's right. There's a reason why men want the clicker. Amen. <laughs> Bam, you can. Get right. it out of there. Amen. Amen. It's the man's responsibility to show his family what servant leadership is all about. That's right. You know, God, God doesn't want men to walk around like little dictators. No. Tell them, being the bossy one, you do this, you do that. Uh, uh. It's the man's responsibility to honor his wife verbally in other ways. So I want to just take this a step further. How many are you still with me? Come on. God created the animals. God created Adam, then the animals. Actually, the animals and then Adam. And he, what he did was he brought all the birds and all the animals of the field to Adam, and Adam began to name them, right? Uh -huh. That's the last part of, of, of verse 19 in chapter 2. And, that, and this, what this indicates is that God was given Adam authority. In the Old Testament, you see, the ability to name something or someone shows that you have authority. So Adam here has authority over all the beasts of the, of the field. And he calls them and he names them. And then, of course, you know the rest of the story. Adam falls asleep and God chose to bring femininity out of masculinity. And God takes a rib and he creates the woman and, and he presents her to Adam. And, and you'll notice uh, that, 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 that he looks to the man and, and what Adam did was he, he used his God-given authority by naming her. I've never really seen this in the Word until this week. Genesis 2, 23, Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. And so God says, okay, that's what you want to call her. That's what she shall be, right? So in other words, God gave Adam ultimate responsibility. Men and women are equal in value. But how we lead our families as men is incredibly important. I know some of you might be thinking, I can't believe my pastor is preaching this Great old job. style stuff. Why yeah. are you doing that? Two reasons. First of all, because it's in the Bible, right? right. And I'm a Bible preacher. And the second reason is because there's so much against this in our culture that it needs to be said. Amen. And what I'm really saying is time for men to stand up and be the leaders that Amen. God called them to be. Come on. That's it's right. time for men to be the first one in the altar. It's time for men to lead in prayer and to know the Amen. word. A lot of people don't like this kind of a teaching because they, they think that uh, that this teaching says that women are inferior. How many know the Bible doesn't say that? Not one time. Women are not inferior. Not one time. All right. Tell your husband, I am not inferior. Okay. You're not. I mean, women go to college. They excel in academic studies. They lead companies. They govern in politics. They have leadership. We're not arguing about a woman's intelligence or her abilities. But what I'm just saying very loud and clear to every man in the room today is that if you want a foundation to build a life on, then as men, we've got to accept the spiritual responsibility to be all that God has called us to be. Amen. Amen. I'm saying it loud and clear. Amen. And the reason why some families are in terrible shape is because men have not stepped up to the plate and been what they should have been. Amen. Uh -huh. 
And I know there might be a man or two here who knows a little bit about the New Testament and you're thinking, this is great. I'm going to go home and tell my wife she's got to submit. I got a little advice for every guy in the room. Don't do that. I tried that. Back in the day. <laughs> Shortly after I got married, I'm like, you're going to have to submit to me, woman. You're a Christian woman. I'm a Christian man. It didn't work then. I don't think it's going to work today. It won't work tomorrow, okay? Did you know there's nowhere in the Bible where it tells men to tell their wives to submit to them? No single place in the Bible says that. But let me tell you, there's some very clear instruction for men, all right? It's a full-time job. Actually, let me give you some of those things that men are supposed to do. And all you ladies say amen. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Dwell with them according to knowledge. Honor your wives that your prayers will not be hindered. All right. Amen. The scripture tells women to respect their husband, to give them that kind of honor. In fact, the Bible talks about mutual submission. Did you know that? Right. There's a verse in that same passage that says we're to submit to one another. One another. That's right. As one, we're to submit to one another. That's right. And uh, I have listened to my wife and submitted to her thoughts and ideas many times. And, and, and you say, why did you do that? Because two heads are better than one. Right? And she was right and I was, well, I was wrong, okay? So I had to listen, right? Husbands, you are crazy if you don't communicate with your wife about important decisions and don't talk things over with them. She, Jereen, is a wise woman. So let's get our biblical rules straight. A man is to be a spiritual leader of the of the home. According to the book of Genesis, now the woman is to be a suitable helpmeet. That's right. A suitable helpmeet. My dad used to always say this. He used to always say, 